Welcome back. My goodness me, what a fabulous men's singles we've just witnessed. What was that? Was that at 8.14 down in the deciding game? Kenta Momota, the former world champion, two-time former world champion, coming back in an absolute thriller. Well, we've still got four more matches to come, and uh, up next is women's doubles, and it's the Commonwealth Games gold medalist, Pearlie Tan and Tina Muralithera up against the beaten finalists from last week at the Korea Masters, Hirokami and Kato. So obviously the home players here will have the home support. My goodness me, what a day we're having. First day of coverage here of the Kumamoto Masters Japan, a Super 500 event on the HSBC BWF World Tour. Now this match is from the bottom half of the draw and uh, we can see that also in uh, this half of the draw is the uh, Chinese pair Zhang Shexian and Zheng Wu who have been as high as world number twos so in this half of the draw just one seeded pair and incidentally there's only two seeded pairs in the second round of the women's doubles. That is absolutely extraordinary. We started with six seeds. Uh, two seeds uh, unfortunately pulled out before the start of play. But to be down to two seeds by the second round is almost unheard of. So the two pairs making their way onto court. And Neither pair seeded in this one. Uh, but of course, the Malaysian combination are hugely experienced and they have been up as high as five on the world rankings. So presumably they should start as favorites, but always beware okay, of Japanese players it's playing play. on home soil. Red, as you can see, this will be a second meeting between these two pairs, and the only previous meeting Receive, was in the very first round Receive. of the Korean okay. 500 so, event off. earlier okay. this year, and it was three games. That match in Korea was just one minute shy of the hour mark. So if we have a match that's half as good as the previous encounter between these two, I think we're in for a thriller. So first tournament for the Malaysians since the Asian Games. They pulled out of the European leg of the World Tour. Missed the Denmark and French. They weren't uh, entered into all four European tournaments, just the two 750 events in Odense and Ren. So Pearly Tan is 23 years of age. And that equates to five foot four and a half. Uh, born in uh, Kedah, the northwest of the Malay Peninsula. Now, their world ranking, as you can see, is uh, way down from their career high, which I was telling you was up in the top five. Five for three weeks from the end of January earlier this year. Tina Muro Litoran is the older of the two at the age of 25. And both the same height, she was born in Selangor. Well, they've been in two finals so far this year, both of them, incidentally, at Super 500 level. And in the very first round, they had a tough encounter against uh, Li Yu Lim and Xin Xiang Chan, coming through 21-18 in the deciding game in an hour and three minutes. So their two finals, Malaysian Masters and the Hong Kong Open. So to their opponents, and Rui Hirokami is 21 years of age, and they uh, too are down from their highest ever ranking. Uh, they've been inside the top 20, as you can see. Born in Toyama, uh, located on the uh, coast of the Sea of Japan, on central Honshu. Her partner also born Ready to on play. the main island of Honshu. Both 21 years of age, and uh, what a breakthrough they had last week at the Korea Masters. Their first ever uh, final at 
the Korean events, and they beat in the first round a pair promoted from the qualifying. And it was the American youngsters, Corbett and Lee, the silver medalists at the World Junior Championships in Spokane earlier this year. Charles Wang of Chinese Taipei is our umpire for this one, and Su Xiaofeng of China is the service judge. So just for the record, it was their first final in Korea, but the Japanese pair, it was a second final at World Tour level. Uh, they lost in the final of the Chinese Taipei 300 event last year. So two finals, but sadly for them, twice they've had to settle for second best. Ladies and gentlemen, am I right? Hina Muradita Tan and Perry Tan. Malaysia. <laughs> and on my left, Yuna Kato and Rui Hirokami, Japan. Hina Murari Tatan to serve to Rui Hirokami, love all play. So, Tina Murulithara getting this second round women's doubles match underway. One love. Chris, I was saying that it's the first tournament since the Asian Games for this Malaysian pair. Injury woes, they have been a little prone to injuries, haven't they, in recent months? Yeah, definitely, and I think that's one of the biggest reasons why their world ranking has dropped slightly, because they are very good. Um, for me, they're definitely a top 10 pair, but as you highlighted, if, if they're gonna be struggling to consistently play the tournament out to pull out of a few, it's difficult to maintain your ranking at that that level, and especially ladies doubles at the moment, it is so competitive. I've said it before, I do think it's the most improved event over the last couple of years. Oh, goodness me. Now, what happened there? Curly Tan dropping her racket. Did she hurt her wrist? was a little concerning to me. It's going wide. I certainly th I think, Chris, that women's doubles is the most physically demanding of all five disciplines because they regularly have rallies that uh, it's not unusual in a match to see a rally go 100 shots, and they don't, uh, in brutal honesty, waste as much time as some of the uh, players in other disciplines in between Three, long, hard-fought rallies. Two. Yeah, I, I definitely uh, hear your point. I think Mr. Momota might have a disagreement about that after his last two days. But no, ladies' doubles is an incredibly grueling event just because of, uh, as you said, the, the rally duration. I think the defences have improved well. Oh. You know, the defences have improved so much that you have to work so hard to get through them. Um, it's going to be interesting if the, the, these very young Japanese pair could maintain this level they've started at through the duration of the match. Obviously, last week they did, but if you look at the pairs they beat last week, they didn't beat a pair of this level. Um, so it's going to be interesting how it plays out today. Yeah. I totally agree with you, Chris, on the, the fact that the women's doubles Three. players have uh, improved their defences considerably over the last five years. I think the defensive play of, of women's doubles players has been quite remarkable for some considerable time, at least a decade. I think what's happening is that we went through a period where women's doubles players were very defensive. Now the pairs are looking to attack, so we're having much more explosive and, and dynamic rallies 
Yeah, I think it, I think for me though, the, the defense was so simplistic. Let's say four, four or five years five. ago, it was very basic. Three. Whereas now, I think it's a lot more creative, and it has to be because the whole general level overall has improved, especially the depth. I'd say previously, maybe number 20 in the world at ladies doubles. Don't get me wrong, they were a good level, but nowhere near the level they're at now. I mean, if we just take this Japanese pair, I know their world ranking is, is slightly different to what the highest it's been, but at 28 in the world, they're a very good pair. Whereas, I mean, look at that. Yeah. Whereas previously, I'd say four or five years ago, 20... Look at the defense as well from the Malaysians. And this is what I mean about ladies doubles. It is the, the level it, overall has improved for me personally so much over the last kind of three or four years four, with five. some of the young pairs coming through or even the Malaysian pair that we've got in front of us. There's, there's top 10 in the world now are so good. Slightly Six, slow playing conditions five. when I was watching while you were commentating on that many singles. Is it slow conditions, do you think? I would say they're just quite nice, as in it looks. It doesn't look like there's too much of a drift. Um, oh, that's great, a good yeah, great flick. Um, I'd Never. say overall five. it's fairly normal. I wouldn't say it's too quick or too slow. You can get through with the attack. Sometimes in Japan, especially at the Japan Open, they play an incredibly large hall and it is very, very slow and you have to work so hard to to get through. Whereas in here, it's a bit warm up and it's not as big a hall, so people are getting through. As long as the attack has variation and good placement. But it looks a nice hall to play in. idea yeah, from, from execution. Eight, I think it didn't really even have to be extremely tight just because that's where the gap was. There was an open space there. Double service Eight. line. I personally think that doesn't happen enough. Pinasa. It's in the partner watching the shuttle clearly because Pinasa. I'm confident Sorry. Pearlie was going for that. And uh, if Tina hadn't have signaled quite loudly, it's going out. I think she would have hit it. That's a good play. Just 
the strong of the back line. And it means that the Malaysians, Pearly Tan, and Tina Brooks go to a game interval with a three-point advantage in this open game. Yeah, well watched. Chien Hao, the Malaysian's coach. My goodness, he's done good work with this Malaysian women's doubles pair. He was almost such a talented player himself, wasn't he, Chris? He was a very good player. I think he had one of the, the strongest forearms there ever was. He was so strong on the defence that so you'd attack him. He'd just whip you, whip you, whip you. I had a few, few tussles with him over my time. Yeah, former world junior champion, I believe, with Tambun Hyong. Is that right? I think so. Yeah. Well, A. Maybe the Japanese pair just trying to overforce it a little bit too much. Yeah, I would agree. And I think it came from. Uh, I think it was Pearly in that rally, got one back that was incredible, turned the shuttle really well. And sometimes when you feel like you can't get through, you do try even more, you kind of force it, and then you end up making the mistake yourself. Oh, that's brilliant. Wonderful, wonderful work 30, by Nora Little. Eight. One, two interceptions after a good serve. That's brilliant. And the big thing was there after the first interception, she made a move. She was very proactive. Thing. Incidentally, this Japanese pair uh, play in the same club as Akane Yamaguchi, and they play their home matches, their pro uh, team play their home matches in this very arena. So they should certainly be used to the conditions. Oh, oh that's why by Whisker. Oh my goodness me, that was a lovely idea. Yeah, it was perfect before that. Before the end result, everything she did there was absolutely perfect. And I think that's something, Chris, that with this Malaysian pair, it's their adventurous style that I certainly like. They like to, to explore possibilities, to go for the unusual shot. Doesn't always work, as happened in the last rally, but they're always looking to do something a little different. And I like that. That's a brilliant shot. What perfect placement on the smash from Hirokami. Across the body. Committed to the backhand defence, Pearly Tan. And she was found wanting. Situation. You've got to make the decision quickly and stick with it. You Ready? can't really change your mind, otherwise that's what can happen. Another one that's just wide by a whisker. Just a few unforced errors now from the Malaysians that have creeped in here. And it's amazing when you look at the uh, Japanese ladies' doubles. This is the sixth-ranked pair at 28 in the world. The depth they have is absolutely amazing. Oh, Again, that's though, a good smash. Great placement. You can see Hurley's committed to the forehand heavily here. 
were just picking up on the point you were making about the strength of Japanese women's doubles. Chris, when was the last Japanese women's doubles pair to win? Not only a Super 500 event, which is giving you a bit of a clue, but any World Tour event. Which pair or which tournament or which year? What do I have to Well, do? You, you tell me. After so much strength in depth, they're back level. This is great. This is six straight points. There's got to be a pair this year. There's got to be. There's got to be a pair this year. But the point is, is that when we talk about Japanese strength and women's doubles, no Japanese pair has won a World Tour event for 12 World Tour tournaments. The last time was Matsuyama and Shida at the Canadian Open 500. Which is surprising, as you said, considering the phenomenal depth that they have in their ladies' doubles. Yeah. Well, this is an extraordinary run. Seven straight points. It's all rather reminiscent of the men's singles we've just watched. Yeah, she knows it. Missed opportunity. By Kato. Oh. Oh. see what she 16, was trying to do. 15. Get it deep into the backhand corner. Nice idea. I think Pearlie might have uh, the best stop drop out of the ladies doubles players I'd say in the world she has such good variation overhead one I particularly like is the the uh, disguised angled uh, cross-court drop that she plays from her forehand side that one was down the middle with the right press I mean this wonderful disguise with her overhead shots Fortunes. 18, 15. <laughs> great, great. Get ready quicker. Umpire mm. wanting the players to get ready quicker. It's good umpiring. I like to see that. Again, the drop shot. And again. Upward smash. So I'm not putting him in trouble at the end there. This one is so important that the, the, the attack goes obviously in a downward trajectory, otherwise, it's so easy to step in. Really good defense, though, from the Japanese girls. Now, what's the problem? That's just shoelace, I think. Oh, thank goodness for that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my okay, heart had know. a little flutter there. My goodness me. Don't need any more important woes.
Whoops. Yeah, that's good awareness by the Japanese pair. Shots from Hirokami hold and flick over her opponent's head. Great awareness. And sometimes, I don't know if you agree, Chris, but sometimes I think Pearly Tan does overcommit on her defence to, to look to go forward. She tries and plays that crouch defence. If it works, it's utterly brilliant. But if it doesn't work, that's the problem, as we saw in the last rally. Yeah, she can accidentally expose her partner because Goldberg, there is a gap. And 19, it's so difficult because she's got to time it exactly right with the amount of pressure she puts on. She's got to put enough pressure to be able to step in that she doesn't have to worry about the shot going over. And in that situation, she didn't, which allowed the opponent to go over. Two-point advantage and two points away from the opening game. Yeah, nice block from Curly Tan. And three game point opportunities. on their first and Tina Mularitadan 21-17 umpire confirming that scoreline of 21-17 opening game in just about 20 minutes well we had some excellent rallies in that and indeed as I was saying some fluctuating fortunes but it is the Malaysian pair of Tan and Laura Lithuan that take the opening game 21 <laughs> One game to the good. Love all. Play. And a traditional little bow to all four corners of the court by all Japanese players before play gets underway. In any game, it's great respect that they show to the court officials. Oh, my goodness gracious. One. That came no. off the frame of the racket. Very effective. It doesn't really matter. level they moved the shuttle around well I think they definitely made more unforced errors and simpler errors in okay positions um, Three, love. I think the Malaysians were a fraction up and down in the first game Three, I think there were moments of brilliance three, almost like that 
with the placement. It's the placement there. It's flat. She's not expecting it that flat, but the, the Japanese are going to have to try and get the attack more because if the Malaysians get even more comfortable on the attack, I think they're going to get through easier than they did in the first game. It's over. One. Overall, though, they played a good first game, the Japanese. It's evident why they got to the final last week. They are a very good pair, especially for 21 years old. It's the wrong shot. What should she have played? Four. She's got to push it. She's got to push it through a player's softer shot. She's almost tried to brush it, but it's gone. She's brushed it in an upward direction. She's got to push it deeper so it goes past the net player, in between the two players, almost in the midcourt, to separate the partnership. Fantastic touch there from Hurley. Five, one. Yeah, the court needs a bit of mopping up here. coaching bench. Difficult to interpret that. Are they feeling quite confident? Are they feeling a little bit like that? I think the former rather than the latter. Great. Five. One. For what it's worth, I think the Japanese are too predictable on the return of serve. I think they need to, to mix up their return of serves more. I can't remember one where they pushed it deep into one of the back corners. It's a, it's a bad mistake there. She's Six, not really in a terrible two. position. She could have just pushed it straight. Less power, though, to actually make your opponents move. She moved her head, didn't seem to be hitting that final shuttle. Watch this from Pearly Tan. Watch Pearly. Look at that. Yeah, I think it looked, What's an extraordinary shot. <laughs> she, she slightly misjudged it, I think. Uh, the shot <laughs> came a lot flatter than she, she anticipated. Very good return. Silver. Seven, three. Right, since I mentioned Silver, about the return of serve four, from the Japanese seven. pair, they've received four, or is that now five, serves. Every single one has been a block to the net. Every single one. to vary it. That's a lovely one. That's nice. Great shot. Nicely done. It's over. Big gap, open Eight. court, and she just puts Four. it into it. Pulls the opponent out with the cross drive on the shot before she opened the court up herself. Yeah. Another block back to the net on the return of serve. If it's a low serve, we'll do something different. Yes, something different. Well done. What a difference to the outcome of the rally. Five, eight. I should be a coach, you know, Chris. <laughs> Could open our own little academy. <laughs> Shot. 
highly skillful Silver. shot to be able to play that at the Nine. net. Five. She does have time because the shot from the Japanese girls, the quality wasn't really there. Hey. Good return. Silver, yeah. six, Rather than just nine. playing the next shot, the last two returns have served. They've had so much better success. Great. Great. Just by varying. Great. Don't delay the game. I like this umpire. It's not for any time wasting. Seven, nine. It's a super rally. longest rally so far. Oh, that was a good serve. Yeah. So Cross the body. Ten. Fantastic placement of the smashes by the Malaysians. Across the body towards the right hip. Always making it difficult for opponents. Look at this. Weighted committed to the backhand defense. Kato. Uh, and then hits it down her forehand side. Wonderful awareness. And the reward is a three-point advantage here in the second game, having already won the first. The advantage for Pearly Tan and Tina Moro Litheran. My goodness, they're playing well. Oh, they'd have to against this good Japanese pair. Pair right in form, having reached the final of the Korea Masters last week. Oh. Wow, she created her own luck there. Eight. Yeah, I would agree with you there, Jill. She made a move and she was covering what she should have covered. Fortunate, but I would agree she made she made that herself by being active and proactive. That reminded me of, of a player from the past, you know. Oh. Taking that half chance. Nine. And he just happens Twelve. to be sitting to my right. He used to rush the net like that, didn't you? Well, mainly because I didn't want to do all the work at the back. <laughs> I wanted the uh, the easier role of the well, not the easier role, the less physically fatiguing role. Luckily I had a partner that could jump around all day. Over 13, 9.
Oh, good flick, sir. Oh, no, it's just like... It's over. No, I like the skies hey. on that. I think there is a bit of a drift, you know, Chris. I think the shuttle is flying a little bit quicker coming towards the Japanese pair. So, as we all look down during the rallies, coming towards us, so as we're looking now, I think the shuttle's flying faster coming towards us. Silver, 40, 10. So well. looking at the Japanese coach and I thought I recognized her it's Reika Kakiwa the Olympic silver medalist in London 2012 played with Fuji do you remember Kakiwa and Fuji yeah Fuji actually spent some time over in England um, after she stopped oh. um, but I've seen quite a few I saw Hayakawa earlier coaching one of the matches, you've got Kimura, Sonoda, Endo, they have a lot of their ex-players coaching and, you know, I think it's a great idea because they've got so much experience and so many good players that hopefully can pass on the knowledge to the next generation. Absolutely. Well left, yeah, I'm getting more and more convinced by the drift. decision from Hurley Town. Play, Chris, Silver, with Pearlie Tan hitting from the back of the 30. court and gradually making her way forward. There's the second downward shot from the back, and she's gradually moving forward until she can finish it off from the net. Yeah, and she set herself up with the, the placement of her attack. It kind of meant her opponent couldn't get it away from her. She did exactly the right, the right thing. say the Malaysians 19, attack has been 30. crisper and it's been better placed and they've had it it feels like anyway they've had the attack more in the second game two points away from the quarter final I've seen players and pairs come back from bigger deficits than this. 
but it is a tall order. Yeah, there's Kakiwa. There she is. She's looking so well. She's looking very young, considering she won a back in London, was it? 2012, yeah. yeah. I think it's just you and I are getting older, Chris. Everybody looks young to me. It. Would you go and leave it? Yeah, she can smile because they have a comfortable lead. The first one I really liked, she was racket arm outstretched, almost launching herself towards the net to keep the shuttle going in a downward direction, and then missed the easier one. And the swing was just a bit too big, and the follow-through dragged the shuttle in a downward direction. Ah! Nice. Yep. It's over. As you were pointing out, the placement, I think, of the attacking plate has been absolutely superb for the Malaysians today. And they've earned themselves five match point opportunities. Very good shot there. It's over. 15. 20. See when you get to see on the replay. She just steps into that defensive shot and takes it so early and just counters it straight back. One match point. Well saved. Another four remain though for the Malaysians. Oh, that's utterly brilliant. Oh, they're challenging. Three, I saw that plum on the line. In. First challenge of this women's doubles. One match point down. Well, it wasn't plum on the line, but it was on the line. <laughs> the line by the narrowest of possible margins. So it is indeed Pearly Tan and Tina Moralitharan who are through to the quarterfinal. 21-17, 21-16 in a match lasting 41 minutes. Well, as always, they're a hugely entertaining pair to watch. Congratulated by their coaches. And lovely to see them back on court and playing so well again after missing the European leg of the HSBC BWF World Tour. So they're through to the quarterfinal. We don't know yet who they will play against in tomorrow's quarterfinal, but we do know for certain that they've secured a good victory today. The Malaysians, Atan and Mura Lizarat. 21-17, 21-16 in 41 minutes.